what is up boxing besties welcome back to chicken boxing on youtube and if this is your first time what's up my name is lily i am an independent boxing journalist who sometimes gets on here and yaps about whatever's going on in the boxing world but also gets to exclusive content interviews and a lot of exclusive boxing content so if you're into all that go ahead and subscribe and if you like yapping about boxing even better subscribe and become a boxing bestie but like the title says we're going to talk about this past weekend's undisputed match at 175 because there is some sort of controversy <laughs> um i personally also have people winning not by super mega a lot because I feel like Bernie B have definitely got busier the second half of the fight and had people doing more lateral movement than before and throwing less, right? So there was definitely a, a decrease in in his output and just in in how he was how he was uh, doing the first half of the fight. But I still felt like Bivol did very well taking a lot of Berta Bia's aggression when it intensified, even in the in the second half, which is why I still had him up. It, I didn't really sit down and score it round by round. But in my opinion, originally, I was like, what the heck, Berta Bia, really? And a lot of people are calling it a robbery, but upon a uh, rewatch for me, I didn't, I, I didn't think it was a robbery, like, you know, officially the first time I watched it. But I did feel like they were being very generous to Berta B because it's still a majority decision. That's still a close fight, right? But when one of the scorecards, it was giving Triple G Canelo one, right? Like, kind of like great fight, but it leaves you with like a bitter taste in your mouth. So I didn't call it a robbery, but upon rewatch, I did feel like I, I, I watched it more maybe trying to study just Berta B. And I would see how the judges would have him winning based on aggression, especially again in the later half. Um, and he was just being his usual self in the later rounds. I just feel like he could have still done more. There were times with, where Berta Biev would be having, you know, be on the ropes or, or, you know, really pushing him to push his, his lateral movement. And even then he would kind of just like, you know, wait on be or kind of just stop engaging and wait on be to initiate. And I would just be like, Come on, like, remember who you are. Like, literally, you are Arturo Berdebiev who comes forward and knocks guys out. And I'm not saying he didn't have pressure here, but it wasn't the same, in my opinion, as in the previous bouts. As for Bibol, I did feel bad for him, just his face, because there's a specific picture I saw, and credit to the photographer, to Matron's photographer, because they had way better photos than whatever Top Rank sent. Um, they had amazing photos, and one of these photos that has... Bibol's face you can tell you know after the, the after the the finishing bell you can tell that he's like I took this shit like he's like I won so then to see that the next photo was him kind of just looking like so disappointed at like it, it's so sad it's like it made me feel so sad for him but also not much upon rewatch especially a third time because when you compare it to any other undisputed bouts you don't take off rounds <laughs> like I know we can say that, well, that's what Berta Biev did the first half, right? Like, he wasn't throwing his all. Like, he picked it up in a second. But I think the thing with Berta Biev, especially being 39 years old, it was part of his game plan to just cruise to the first half because he probably knew that Bibol was going to take him to the late rounds anyway. So he might as well just give it his all, give it his all the second fight, the second half of the fight. Because, again, he's been getting his latest knockouts kind of late, right? So why would he even try to get this guy... Uh, his toughest opponent to date why would he even try to get him out of there in the first half when he's this guy's called a distance you know what i mean like i just feel like it makes more sense for him to do that than be bold people you should not have taken the last two rounds off specifically you don't take the championship rounds off especially on an undisputed fight which is why i feel like be bold's also like yeah i guess like I i'll take the decision right his team is saying you know robbery they are claiming that they want an investigation but Bibol, even in, in uh, post-fight interviews with um, with other channels, have said things like, you know, that's fine. I, I lost. The, the judges feel like I lost. That's fine, even though I might disagree. But he also says that he feels like he didn't do enough. So in my opinion, he, does, he doesn't feel like he has to argue a robbery because maybe he felt like he wasn't perfect or that his performance could have been better. Even though, in my opinion, I feel like that's by, his best performance by far. But, you know, I... I could see the other scorecards for... I could see the 114, 114, and 115, 113 for Berta Biev. I could not see 
people only winning three rounds. Like, that, that just, my head would just not comprehend that. So while I did not have, uh, I think I had people up like one or two rounds personally. Like, I just feel like, yes, some rounds were close. I can give you that, yes, if I can be close. But I just feel like people had the better aggression regardless of it not being as constant pressure as Berta BFs. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he was doing so well. It was so fluid in there. But, you know, Berta BF fucking rev, like, just ramped it up in the seventh round. And I think it had people like, whoa, right? Like, I need to watch out with this guy. Because at seven round, Berta BF was going heavy on people. And, and it, you know, that whole second half of the fight was Berta BF bringing it to him. Which, again, I think it could have been better. They both could have been done better. As for who comes next for each of them, I think they should do a rematch. Like, I think it makes the most sense to have a, an immediate rematch based on the fact that it was a majority decision, right? It wasn't a clear decision based on the fact that there is some controversy, and because, hey, another payday. And then Turkey was saying that he had people winning, which kind of negated all those other conspiracies Conspiracies that this might have been a premeditated um, outcome, right? And, you know, it, it sucks for for Eddie Hearn, who, in my opinion, needs a limpia. I need to tell, take him to, like, my señoras in my rancho because, bro, me and you both, Eddie, vamos a hacernos una limpia because even when you win, you lose. Eddie, so let's, 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 let's make an appointment with una bruja. But because I know that Berta Biev is older and he's probably gonna retire soon and be bold, still younger, uh, you know, younger 30s and has a lot more to give and this performance only made me more excited to see how, what he can do against other aggressive opponents. I would love to see him against Benavides. Like, if the Berta Biev rematch doesn't happen... Okay, cool. Like, he's going to retire soon anyway, probably. And then here comes the belts again, right? And I just feel like Bivol can definitely become champ because he can beat Berta Biev in a second fight. And I think that he can, you know, if if they were to vacate, be vacated, he can get them because he can beat a lot of these guys, right? So a Morale versus uh, Benavides winner for either guy would be ideal. Throw them all in a box, shake it, and pick two. I would love it in any way that you would mix that up. As for this weekend, we have Tim Zhu returning after that huge gash on his head that he got against uh, Sebastian Fendora and, uh, and prevented him from being, being able to fight Virgil Ortiz in the August 3rd undercard, which was honestly the fight that most people were uh, trying to be there for besides the the Pitbull and Rayo fight. And Tim Zhu's going to challenge for a title, the IBF um, junior middleweight title from Barack Murtazaliev, I believe his name is. I'm familiar with this kid for a while because um, he used to be in main event cards and I used to be a Kovalev fan before all the bullshit. I used to really like Kovalev. And um, I was familiar with the main event undercards. So this kid I knew since the beginning and he has a very, you know, Similar style to the likes of the Russians. This kid just got this title in April, and this is going to be his first defense. He got his title in Germany uh, by taking it from the actual champ. So he did go to enemy territory and take that belt from the champion. So you got to give him props just on that and got to, you know, kind of take him serious just on that alone as well. Know that this is regular competition. This is someone who's not scared to, to come in there and who's not coming here to lose after just now getting their title. I'm also familiar that uh, because I train out of Boxing Laboratory, I believe was the name of this gym in Oxnard, because that's a lot of uh, that's a place where a lot of the Russians train, and this is a guy who again is with main events, and he is 22 and 0 and has 16 uh, KO, so he has decent knockout power. And again, I've seen his fights, and I do I I do appreciate his style. I do think it 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 can be a fan friendly style, especially because he looks uh. For the knockouts, even if it's later on in the fights. So I do I do like his style, but I do feel like with this fight, Tim Zhu is the, this guy that in my opinion already beat Fandora. And his resume is just so much better in comparison than uh the champs. And I think that's gonna be the difference. Um you can say that Murtazaliev is rugged because they've also been in some tough fights, but Tim Zhu literally had his head cracked open and just fought that way regardless. To me, like, what are you going to do against him and that he's going to quit? Like, what you, what, you, what can you do at this point against Tim Zhu that's going to phase the man? Like, nothing, right? And then I think this camp especially, um, 
I guess, productive for him because he invited his dad. I know he has some sort of, he must have some sort of like daddy issues because the way that this is framed is like, oh, the first time in so long. And I, I was, I reached out and I didn't think he'd come, but here he came and he's going to be ringside for the first time. And I don't know when. So it's like, they're framing it as like, mm, like there's might have been some, some daddy issues there. I'm not familiar if you are dropping in the comments because me gusta el chisme, you know what I mean? I want to know. But I do feel like um, his dad is is a big deal. You know, even if a lot of us Mexicans may dislike him for obvious reasons, the man is a Hall of Famer internationally and rightfully so. And Tim Zhu, while, you know, he created his own path, it's hard to ignore the fact that this is his lineage and you cannot tie that up, especially given the fights that Tim Zhu has already gifted the fans, regardless of the lack of real championship status. So I feel like this fight... I think he's going to win, and he's going to win in an amazing manner that's going to only catapult him into, you know, some great fights. Um, I can't say into the turkey fights anymore because I know they had some beef with Turkey, Alashik, you know, acting kind of like a man-child and not liking the fact that maybe Tim Zhu was not enthusiastic and doing backflips over the fact of, over the fact of, money and going to Saudi Arabia, right? Maybe uh, Turkey al Sheikh also maybe feels some sort of way about Tim Zhu pulling out of that fight because he knew that a lot of people were coming specifically for the Virgil and Tim Zhu fight. And when that fell off, maybe, you know, they started kind of dropping the ticket prices. So maybe that has something to do with it. But I think it's more of the fact that Tim Zhu's not really here for the money. And he's like, yeah, I don't care if you pay me more or whatever. I'm going to fight wherever, wherever I want. And just because he made that, like, Vocal, he vocally said that. I don't think Turkey has that like that, but I, I think he does. He's not gonna need it if he gets a really good win this Saturday, and I think he is because I was still up that Virgil Ortiz fight. Are you, are you kidding me? Could you imagine that in Vegas, Virgil versus Tim Zhu? Oh my God! Or the winner of um Sergey Bochuk and um Akhmadov, right? Because that's another one. Like that's gonna be an amazing fight. Madrimov, I'm sorry, Madrimov. Oh, so se me, se me confunden los nombres de los rusos y esos Eastern Europeans. Um, Madrimov, the one that, that Terrence Crawford just beat. So they're going to fight for a title. And that's great because both of them to get a title opportunity again, it's it's freaking great because they did great in their last fights. I don't think that they, they didn't lose, like, you know, they didn't get swept. They didn't get dominated. So bring that on. Like, I love that. Throw Virgil in that mix. Any, what other 154 pounders are there? A lot. Like, please, the 154 division is probably one of my favorites in a long time because it remains competitive regardless of whether, you know, these guys make it to the top 10 pound for pound lists and, and whatnot, right? But these guys are competitive and their fights are competitive and oh my God, I love it. So let me know what you think about this weekend's fight. I personally am going to miss it porque voy a ver a Chino Pacas, que siguen en las pacas, uh, on Saturday at the Novo. But I'm going to watch it probably on my phone if there's nothing going on at the time that I'm that that's going on. Or I'm going to watch it the next day. So let me know what you guys think of the Tim Zoo fight. Who do you think is going to win? Am I missing anything on uh, Murtazaliev that maybe I'm just dismissing? Let me know what you think in the comments. And, you know, let me know what you think of people and Bird as well. This is the kitty that we rescued from the last video.